So hello, my name is David Havlin. I'm with the University of California Cooperative Extension, and I'm here today with the Almond Board to talk about mating disruption. Uh, mating disruption is one of the techniques that almond growers can use to help manage navel orangeworm, which of course is the biggest problem uh, as far as insects go facing the almond industry. Uh, every year about 1% of all almonds get eaten. So when you add that up, that's about 25 million pounds of nuts every year. So we wanna make sure uh, everything is being done that's possible that that doesn't happen. So as I said, mating disruption is one way that almond growers can manage navel orangeworm. And the way this works is that male and female navel orangeworm in order to produce eggs have to mate. And mating occurs after the female releases a pheromone that attracts the male to her. Now what we can do is we can go into a laboratory and we can make just pounds and pounds and pounds of piles of pheromone. We can put that pheromone into cans and bottles and different formats and release that into the orchard. And what that does is when the pheromone is out there in high quantities, it lands on the navel orange room, the male's antenna, hits a receptor, and that receptor fires or gets activated to say that there's a female in the area. But when the entire orchard is filled with this pheromone, those receptors get triggered and triggered and triggered so many times that the males lose their ability to actually fly around and find females. And if a male can't find a female or is delayed in finding her, she either can't mate or is delayed in mating, which reduces the number of eggs. So what we're essentially doing is managing navel orange worm by making sure that they're never born in the first place. And that's pretty cool. So what we're gonna talk about today is some of the products that are out there that are available for mating disruption. In order to demonstrate how some of these mating disruption products work, I actually brought two older systems with me that are some of the original mating disruption cabinets used by Sutera. So as you can see inside this cabinet, we have a, a canister and the canister is, is pressurized. It's filled with pheromone. At the top, there's a set of electronics. So these electronics know when it's daytime and when it's nighttime, uh, they know when the moths are flying and they're pre-programmed to know when to release pheromone so they can do it when the moths are active, not when they're uh, not active. Uh, there's also batteries and other things to run this unit for one year. So what I have on the table in front of me are the four different systems that are available for 2021. This includes the Checkmate Puffer NOW program from Sutera. It includes Pacific Biocontrol's Isomate NOW Mist program. It's got the Semios NOW program from Semios, and then the Sidetrack Meso program from Trace. And uh, there's a, some subtle differences between them that I'd, I'd like to go through. So first of all, the original aerosol products, uh, the Sotera ones that I mentioned over here, these were put out at two per acre, okay? We now know that two per acre is not needed. So all three of these aerosol products are all put out at the same rate, okay? That's one of these units per acre. All three of these are put out in, uh, it's about April 1st, prior to when the first flight occurs. And all these products last all season long. So there are some subtle differences between these units. Um, first of all, the Pacific Biocontrol and the Sotera product, okay, when you purchase these systems, you'll get a container that essentially has the cans and has the units. It's your responsibility as a grower to snap them together, to turn them on, and to hang them in the orchard. The Semio system is a little different. Okay, the Semio system is actually a, a full service program that Semios offers. So in this case, if you, uh, if you sign up or subscribe to the Semios uh, program, they will actually put these together. They will install them in the field. They will remove them at the end of the season and they will take care of all of the maintenance. Okay? So uh, different options for different people, depending on how you wanna do it. So the other product from Trace, the Miso product, so these particular strips actually come in a pack like this. Uh, you'll receive them, they come in a tote pouch, and it's the grower's responsibility to take these. Now, there's a range of application rates for the Trace product, but typically they're applied at a rate of 20 per acre, plus or minus. Uh, but as I said, there's some flexibility. If you wanna put a few extra on the upwind side, a few less on the downwind side, um, that's your, your right to do so. Um, so when you put that all together, you know, talk, to people, shop around. Most of these companies offer premiums or rebates for larger volume. Um, 
Likewise, Semios has some programs that if you're willing to share data from your orchard with them, they'll give you some extra premiums or rebates um, on the package. So as I said, feel free to shop around and talk to the different representatives to see what kind of deal you can get for your orchard and how their products will match up with your individual goals. So one common question that growers have is, what does main disruption cost and what is the return on that investment? Generally speaking, main disruption costs about $110 to $120 per acre by the time it's installed and taken back down at the end of the season. Research has shown that using main disruption reduces damage by approximately 50% to 70%, depending on how many acres it's used on. So when you do the math on what damage costs, it shows that if you have 1% damage, using main disruption pays for itself. Okay? Any damage beyond that is actually a positive return on investment that you're making money by investing in a main disruption system. And in cases where there's less damage than 1%, growers have the opportunity to start considering removing one or more sprays from their program to help offset those costs. So as a result, the economics of main disruption are viable to the point that it's definitely an investment that growers should consider. For those of you that are organic almond growers, uh, fortunately there's some options for you. So, uh, so Sutera has an organic option. Essentially this can comes out, an organic version goes in. Likewise, Semios has the same system where this can is replaced by an organic version. And the entire Trace Miso system is also approved for organic use. So for those of you that are do-it-yourselfers, that purchase systems that it's your responsibility to put up and take down, it's actually quite easy to do. So the aerosol systems will come with a hook that looks something like this. You simply take the hook, push it through the front side of the unit. This extension right here goes on the end of a PVC pole. And you take the pole, put this up in the tree over a sturdy branch. Okay, we don't want this coming down at harvest when you shake the tree. So up on a sturdy branch and you leave it there to hang all year. Now make sure you mark the tree because at the end of the season, you're gonna to need to find this unit again, put the pole back up and bring the unit back down for winter servicing. Now in the case of the trace units, the measles are done slightly different. The system will come with a, um, a T, PVC T that looks like this. It has a hole in the top. You take the clip, it goes right in the top of this unit this unit goes on the end of a pole, and you simply take the pole, push it up to a stick, and it will click on, twist, and hang. These units will stay in the field all year, and you go ahead and leave them up. There's no reason to take them back down. For more information about main disruption, you can contact the Almond Board website at almonds.com/ipm, or visit the University of California's Integrated Pest Management website.